Hello friends! Did you know that honeybees are social insects whose colonies can be called superorganisms? Or that an individual bee cannot survive outside its family? The bee community has a strict hierarchy. Each individual performs its specific function. The hive has a queen, drones, and worker bees who are divided into two categories. One category serves the house and the other one flies out for supplies. In today's episode, you'll get to learn a little more about these unique insects, things like why bees sting, who are killer bees, and why the bee dies when it stings. Bees have a very special way of communicating. They live for an average of six weeks, everyone but the queen, who can live up to eight years in nature. There are thousands of bees in a hive, who have to work as a single mechanism, but the insects are unlikely to remember the faces of their hive mates. Instead, they use scent to communicate who they are and what other individuals around them should be doing. If an insect of a different species sneaks into the hive and accordingly looks completely different, it may well be mistaken for one of its own in the event that the newcomer smells the same as the locals. And when the bees attack someone, it may also have something to do with how the victim smells. Moreover, when the bees attack, they mark their victim, thus informing the rest of the bees that the stung creature is dangerous and they should protect themselves. This smell is reminiscent of the smell of bananas. Beekeepers are advised to refrain from using cosmetics with a banana scent, as well as eating bananas just before visiting an apiary. There have been known cases of attacks. Inexperienced beekeepers came to the beehives after eating bananas and ended up being attacked by the whole swarm. If you want to reduce your risk of being stung, then you should rub your skin with almond oil or use any cosmetics with the scent of almonds. This smell scares off the bees. An ordinary worker bee that flew out of the hive to collect honey is not interested in using its weapon against you. Most of the time, bees sting to protect their hive from uninvited guests. Bees have a reflex. If you press on it even a little, it will immediately release its stinger. Even if you simply touch it with some object and put a tiny bit of strength into it, the reflex will be triggered. You should remember this in case a bee lands on you. If you try to crush it, your chances of getting stung will increase significantly. Also, a bee can sting you reflexively if you cross its path. As I said earlier, the bee path is the route it takes from the hive to the flowering of honey plants and back. The bee will gain height if there's an obstacle in its path, either artificial or natural. But if you walk past a hive that has no obstacles around it, you can accidentally get in the bee's path, and if the bee is on the path at the same time, you can get stung. Bee attacks can also be provoked by strong odors, such as the smell of perfume or alcohol. Away from their hives, bees can sting if provoked. If you entered a buckwheat field and one bee attacked you, it doesn't mean that the rest of the bees flying nearby will also attack you. The bees are busy doing their work, collecting nectar and transporting it to the hive. Stinging you isn't part of their plans. Therefore, only one or a few bees may attack you away from the apiary. But if you did manage to wander into someone's apiary, then you need to remember a few interesting things about bees. There is a clear distribution of responsibilities in the bee family. In addition to the queen and the drones, there are worker bees who work inside the hive and don't fly out. They are usually younger bees, flight bees, and guard bees. The guard bees are the ones that will warn you if you wander into their territory. When a family senses that something is approaching them, guard bees fly out of the hive and fly around it in order to identify the potential enemy. But even in this situation, the guards aren't reckless. They give you a warning, they pick up speed and crash into their opponent. This is how they warn you of danger. However, if you didn't understand their warning and continue to approach the hive, then the stinger would come into play. If you're walking through the forest and suddenly feel that someone's bumping into you, don't panic. The first thing to remember is that while you're being warned, sharp hand movements can provoke aggression. Second, 
you need to change your route and it's simply best to go back. Going through a bush is enough to break away from the pursuit. The bees will stop if they see an obstacle. But if you do get stung, don't panic. Folk medicine believes that bee stings are actually good for your health. There's a whole section of medicine called apotherapy, which is devoted to the treatment of various diseases with bee venom. The bee venom is secreted by a special gland of the insect. It's formed as a result of the consumption of pollen by the insects. Bee venom is mostly composed of protein substances, which are divided into enzymes and peptides. Enzymes provide for the sensitivity of the venom. These protein substances are dangerous for people suffering from allergies. Peptides, on the other hand, stimulate hormonal, protein, fat, mineral, and water metabolism in the body. What's interesting is that it's impossible to accurately describe the chemical composition of bee venom. Same as with the honey. As I said, a bee sting isn't fatal, but that's only true for ordinary bees or for people that aren't allergic to bee venom. Unfortunately, there are cases when bees can be deadly to humans. The human body can go into anaphylactic shock in response to having bee venom enter the body. But even if you aren't allergic to bee venom, you can still die from a bee sting. There are bee species that are rather dangerous for humans. For example, killer bees, also known as Africanized bees. This is a hybrid breed known for its increased aggressiveness and the ability to inflict very dangerous stings. However, these bees produce twice as much honey as regular honeybees, which is why they are bred on some farms in Brazil. According to some reports, these bees have killed several thousand animals and more than 200 people over the past 50 years in Brazil alone. But why does the bee die when it stings? It happens due to the structure of its stinger. It is barbed and faces outward like a harpoon. Having pierced the skin of a person or an animal, the stinger gets firmly stuck in it. The insect can only fly away by getting rid of its weapon. And it could all be fine, but a part of the abdomen gets torn off along with the stinger. Whether the bee dies after stinging depends on how hard it tries to escape and how severely its body is damaged. The bee dies after it stings if part of its internal organs gets torn off with the stinger. This is something the bee can't survive, so it dies within a few seconds. The honey stomach is connected to the stinger and continues to contract, squeezing out new doses of venom. This is how bee colonies of tens of thousands of individuals are protected. Well, that's all for today, friends. Have you ever been stung by a bee? Share your thoughts about today's video in the comments. Hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.